So let's finish building the stock list component. According to the mock, the component should display the info for each stock, such as name and price per share. It also should display a buy button for each stock. So let's start with the info. And of course, we'll start by writing the test first. Let's copy the existing test for a template and update the description to indicate that it is asserting against the presence of the info. And before we can add the expect statement against the stock name and stock price, we need to update our elements function so that it can query these elements for us. Once we do that, let's go back to the test and add the assertions against the stock name and price. Now remember that we are doing the test's first approach, which means initially the test should fail because there's no functionality that will make it pass yet. And when we check the test runner, it is expectedly failing. Now let's make the test pass by adding name and price for each stock in the component template, just as our test is expecting. And now the test passes. Now let's add a failing test asserting against the presence of the buy button. Not only that, we will also assert against the expected URL path to which the buy button should point. And don't worry about that, we don't even have the router set up yet to make this path exist in our application. That's just one of the benefits of test-driven development. We can just focus on what's absolutely essential to our component at the moment, and then add the missing pieces once the tests are passing. When following this approach, usually in the end you end up with 90% of functionality done and just need to do some adjusting and gluing a few pieces together, which is a great way to stay on track and get things done quickly. Okay, once again we need to update the elements function so that it can query the buy button for us from the template. And when we check the test runner, it fails once again there's no because there's no button in the component template yet, so our test just doesn't see it and fails appropriately. So let's head to the template and add the button. Note the angular router link property. To make that property available during our test run, we need to add Angular's router testing module to the testbed. Don't forget to import it at the top of the file as well. And then I realized that I'm missing the mock statement in the test, so let's add that as well. And when we check the test runner, we see that all tests are passing. Now let's do some refactoring. You see how each test repeats the same mock statement? This is a perfect candidate to put into a before each statement. So let's do just that. And then delete this statement from each individual test. And check that the test runner is still passing. And it does. Now we're done building out the core functionality of the stock list component. We did all that just using unit tests as our guide without the need to load the app in the browser. This is what I truly love about using test-driven development approach with Angular. So next, we'll load the app in a browser just to see that all the pieces fit together and whatever is necessary to be adjusted. And then we'll style the app so it looks good.